because it's still in growth, but he's also a good man.
Courtney Hatch and Royale, we're so grateful to you. Brother Lee Rogers, what would we do without Lee and our commits? We're thankful to you. Katie Sellers and um, a choir of really exciting sisters, um, 12 sisters representing the 12 apostles who will sing the final song. And especially to Anitra and Brother Steve Kerr, we rely on you and we depend on you and you are such a gift to our Lord. So thank you both. The beautiful take home copy of the testimony of the Living Christ um, was made by Courtney Hatch. Thank you, Courtney, for bringing out a copy of those for everybody. All of the kids, we hope you have one and you can display it in your rooms or somewhere that you'll see it and be able to enjoy that and learn more about the Savior. Thank you to the Elders Quorum for providing the refreshments today and to all of the people in the ward who brought art to the surround our room. As I walked in and was here this morning and could feel the spirit of this art filling the room, I felt already just the strength of these visual depictions of the Savior's life. And also um, the representation that they are of the love that the owners of the art have and their desire to reflect his life and his work in their homes. If one of these pieces is yours, will you raise your hand so we can just thank you and be aware? If any of you brought art and displayed in the room, raise your hand, raise your hand. Thank you so much to all of you. After the program is over, we welcome you to stay, mingle, have some refreshments, and look at some of this beautiful art. As I thought about this program, um, I, I was introduced to this music by a friend of mine who um, actually in a really similar way to what Fitzpatrick has done with their We Believe app. Um, this friend had an idea to take this testimony of the apostles and commission a musician to set it to music. The music was so moving to me personally that I asked our presidency and then other world leaders that they would support us in putting together a program like this and we've been grateful for their support. The idea of witnessing is one that is a powerful concept in the scriptures. We know that it is a law that God abides, that he teaches us truth by witnesses. Witnessing means that he teaches truth and he makes himself apparent and clear to more than one person. So those people can share their witness with others and we can believe on their witnesses. I believe that we all act as witnesses for each other. And that's part of the reason that we worship in a congregation is that we need each other to witness our faith to each other to witness the principles of the gospel that we may be learning and desiring to learn. And when our faith wavers, we can think of those who have acted as witnesses to us. When we make promises before God at baptism in the temple, we do it in front of others who are making the same promises to strengthen our faith and to strengthen our resolve to keep those promises. Sometimes if God and angels can go our way, the witnesses that we make our promises in front of can be earthly witnesses. And they can be some of the most powerful people to remind us that walking the covenant path is a path that ordained by God. In Hebrews 12, we read a beautiful verse which I set down on my phone and I read it. Witnesses, 
Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. As we think about the Easter week, I hope that we'll all feel the strength of the cloud of witnesses that we will have today, witnessing their love of the Savior, their desire to follow him, and their efforts to run with patience the race that is set before them looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, who for joy completed the job that was set before him, to give us his life and his grace from the dead. In Proverbs 14, 25, we read, a true witness delivereth souls. Your witness of the Savior delivers souls. It delivers your own soul, and it delivers the souls of all those who are strengthened by your love for him and your willingness to let your name be known as one who follows him and one who desires to keep his commandments. He is the light and the life and the hope of the world. His way is the path that leads to happiness in this life and eternal life in the world to come. God be thanked for the matchless gift of his divine son. Thank you so much to all who participate today. Let's welcome our first section, Connor and Mary Anders and their children's choir. Under the direction of his father, he created the earth. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. He was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. He went about doing good, yet was despised for it. This gospel is 
gospel was the message of peace and good will. He was treated all, all of every day. Who walked the roads of Palestine, healing the sick, causing the blind to see, and bringing the dead? He taught the truth of eternity, the reality of our pre-mortal existence, the purpose of our life on earth, and the potential for the sons of God and daughters of God in the life to come. and condemned on serious charges, convicted to death by a mob, and sentenced to die on Calvary's cross. He gave his 
fly to atone for the sins of all mankind. His was a great vicarious gift. Sorry, his was a great vicarious gift in behalf of all who would ever live upon the earth. We solemnly testify that his life is eternal to all human history, neither began in Bethlehem nor concluded on Calvary. He was the firstborn son, the only begotten son in the flesh, the redeemer of the world. among his other sheep in ancient America. In the modern world, the Amazon appeared to the boy Joseph Smith, ushering in the long promised dispensation of the Lord's time.
eyes were as a flaming fire. The hair of his head was white like the pure snow. His countenance shone above the brightness of the sun, and his voice was as the rushing of the great waters, even the voice of Jehovah saying, I am the first and the last. I am he who liveth, I am he who is slain, I am your advocate with the Father. Him the prophet also declared, after the many testimonies which have been given of him, this is the testimony last of all which we give of him, that he lives. We saw him even on the right hand of God, and we heard the voice bearing record that he is the only begotten Son of the Father. That by him, through him, and of him, Worlds are and were created, and the inhabitants thereof are beyond the sons and brothers of the God. We testify that he will someday return to earth. We declare in words of solemnity that his priesthood and his church have been restored upon the earth, built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets. 
to describe himself to the informant on March 10th. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. He will rule as the King of Kings and reign as the Lord of the Lord. And every tongue shall speak in worship before him. Each of us will stand to be judged of him according to our works and the desires of our hearts. testimony as his duly ordained apostles that Jesus is the living Christ who is the great King Emmanuel who stands today on the right hand of his father be thanked for the gift of his divine son. Forty-four years ago, we received the patriarch blessing before I departed to land far, far away to serve as a missionary. That patriarch blessing said that I would proclaim him and him crucified, which I did. 
fast forward 44 years, I stand before you to not only proclaim him and him crucified, but I also want to proclaim him and him who was resurrected on the third day. He stands on the right hand side of God the eternal Father to rule and reign for eternity. I bear my testimony that Jesus Christ lives, he loves us, and it is only through him that we will find salvation and eternal life. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sure. 